So greetings, everyone. Good morning. I'm Jack Mills, and I've been a beekeeper for about 15 years. It took uh, 10 years of study before I felt capable of starting. Also, I had to have a property that I wasn't renting. It's a, kind of sad to start bees and then move away because you really can't hand them off to the neighbor. You have to take them with you or uh, somehow it's rather cruel. It's like a dog chained in the backyard. You must do something. You can't just leave them there. And so in, once I bought property, then I could feel confident that I had somewhat of a control of them. I wouldn't leave them stranded. Uh, I started beekeeping because I had, as a young man, read Sherlock Holmes, and I thought he was rather smart. And he had a dream of retiring and becoming a beekeeper. And I thought, if a guy that smart wants to be a beekeeper, that's the kind of guy I want to be. And, uh, so I started reading. I advise anyone interested in beekeeping to read everything they can. It's quite an intellectual activity. It takes a lot of thought and very little work. Uh, you'll think about the bees day after day, what they need, and then you'll spend 10 minutes doing it. <laughs> and so they, they even call it the beekeeping, or farming for intellectuals. That's what they call it. <laughs> I brought in an empty beehive today to show uh, the standard, it's called Langstroth. A man named Langstroth 150 years ago or so made that shaped beehive in his little shop. But he had a new idea. He called it uh, bee space, and we call it bee space. It's uh, a certain dimension, approximately two bee diameters, <laughs> about three eighths of an inch, where if there's that much space in a hive, the bee will not fill it with wax and glue. If there's more or less space than three eighths of an inch, the bee will fill it. Uh, they'll either put honeycomb there or they'll just patch it up. So uh, Langstroth was the fellow who incorporated that into this uh, design. In between every frame and in between every level of frames is this three-eighths of an inch incorporated. The fact that it has the rectangular dimension it has is simply that's what he built that day and we have adopted that. That has nothing to do with bee space or what the bees want or anything. It happened to be what he could carry and it just became the standard. There are all kinds of other shaped beehives today. It's hard to beat this one for our convenience. Uh, it's not too big, not too small. Uh, as far as the bees are concerned, it's okay, but they, they're an organism that, uh, as a body, they make circular, uh, circular shapes. That's a rectangular shape. We humans seem to make rectangles and, uh, much more easily than we make circles. It's very hard to think of a way to make frames in a circular space, especially if you incorporate a top circle. But there is a man who, got, who did it. Uh, my B uh, blog has videos of his hive out in California, a marvelous inventor of beehives. My blog, by the way, is Austin Bee Helpers. Please look there. Uh, the name of that beehive is, uh, oh, it's a long German, Hangekorp is the last word, Weissenseffener, uh, Weissenseffener Hangekorp, I forget how to spell it, but uh, it's in my blog. And he even figured out a way to have a top uh, curving that you open, you take the lid off and you have these curved combs in a curved body. And of course, that's marvelous, but it's very hard to make, very expensive to make. I think you'd have to make it yourself. This one is much more easily found and uh, very convenient. So the one disadvantage is the bees, when they inhabit it, they don't so easily fill the corners. Welcome, Evan. Come on in. So the corners of the beehive are not as penetrated as the center. I'll remove the parts here. This is the telescoping cover. This beehive happened to be uh, just in my garage. I will use it soon, I hope. Telescoping cover. Telescoping, I think, has an adjective meaning uh, maybe going around. I'm not sure what the word telescoping means. Anyway, I don't know. 
<laughs> you can find the meaning of telescoping. This what this is a telescoping cover. It's got a, water, a waterproof metal lid. This is the inner cover. This is uh, what we see when we open the outer cover. We see bees right there, and we see some bit of frames, and we often don't have to go any farther than that to know what's going on. If it's packed full of bees, and you can see a little bit of honeycomb full of honey there, which a beekeeper can tell, you might then know, aha, I've got to get that off of there. They're full. They need more space, or I need to get that honey if I'm going to take it. If there aren't many bees at all, you go, my goodness, what's going on? Did they swarm? Are there fewer bees? You can tell a lot simply by looking through that little hole. It's quite handy. It also is a ventilation for them. We can, if it's a hot day, we can uh, put a popsicle stick or some kind of piece of material here about uh, the dimension of a bee or less. And then when this lid is put back on, it allows air to flow up and through without predators being able to get in. We don't want other bees and wasps to be able to get in, so the little stick we put there has to be like a popsicle stick, something to allow air through but not bees. I brought this to compare to this. It's different, isn't it? The dimension. This is an invention, I believe, of the bee uh, supply company that when you buy one and then you mistakenly buy the other, you will never ever have the right one at the right time. You, you'll have this one, and then it'll be this one, and it'll, it'll, oh my goodness, I need to buy other ones. This is the wrong one. And so you end up buying twice as much material as you need. But uh, I think this one's called medium depth super, super meaning above, like superscript. This is the shallow depth super. They're so similar. There's no reason for that to be that different. There's not enough, there's not enough difference. There's a big difference between this and this, but not much between this and this. So really try, if you start buying parts, to stick with one kind and not buy three kinds. Anyway, I need to have three of everything, and I don't really need it. So I, I brought that just to show you. Uh, these are all old parts to use many times. By the way, your B parts, you trust. Someone else's B parts, why are they giving me these B parts? And what, were, what was happening in that beehive that made them give up beekeeping, I wonder? Uh, it's really kind of, uh, safe sex is the wrong word, but you want to be careful with where did this come from? And is it really that expensive that I can't buy my own and just start from scratch? Because there are bee diseases out there. <coughs> I know for a fact that every colony I've had has never had a bee disease. And so an old part like this I can reuse. It's dirty. It's got evidence of wax moth. I could pass this around if you like. There were old larva pupa of wax moth in here in some far distant past. And that colony died from being consumed by wax moth. And you see the evidence. But it's totally a fine part to put on a hive. No, there's nothing terrible about the fact that wax moths were in here once. But if this was someone else's bee, a hive, I wouldn't know what had happened to that. So these combs here were recently containing this honey, which uh, I'm allowing people to try today. Such fresh, lovely white wax. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Welcome. So